Hello everybody, it's Aaron back from Screen Stars and I'm here once again to do another review for Geek Legion of Doom. Today I'm here to review the 2022 film The Highwayman, The Legend of Dick Turpin. A film that is written and directed by Steve Lawson and if that name sounds familiar to you, Steve Lawson is the writer-director that has brought similar films in this vein to us over the last year or two. He brought us Bram Stoker's Van Helsing, Ripper Untold and Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, and essentially specialises in kind of retelling familiar tales, uh, just doing it with a smaller budget. And the film stars uh, Morgan Reese davis as Dick Turpin, uh, Francesca Louise White, Molly Hindle, Kieran Davis and Tom Hendrick. Um, now, essentially, the film, anybody from the UK will know the name Dick Turpin. I'm not really sure about the rest of the world, maybe. Uh, but he was a famous uh, highway, highwayman, obviously, several hundred years ago. He used to rob people. They made it into a successful TV show when I was a kid. So while he's not as revered as Robin Hood, you know, similar kind of stuff, although uh, he didn't rob from the rich and give to the poor. He kind of just robbed for himself. Now, this film portrays Dick Turpin um, as this kind of light-hearted, bit of a fumbling um, highwayman. Uh, he gets captured numerous times, and in, in typical form with his other films that he's done, Steve Lawson, the ones I mentioned earlier, this isn't a film that kind of directly focuses on Dick Turpin and the legends surrounding D Dick Turpin. It's more... Uh, it more kind of does its own thing. It kind of uses the name Dick Turpin and kind of tells its own story. And essentially the main story here is there is a character called Elizabeth who is trying to get married off by her father. Uh, and she's trying to marry him off to a local businessman, uh, Winthrop, played by Tom Hendrick, who's actually a little bit of a criminal and a thug. He wants to marry this daughter because he's running short of money. He's running all these mines, but he's run out of resources. There's no money left. So he needs to marry this woman in order to get ownership of her lands because he knows underneath her lands there is another very, very um, profitable mine that he wants to have control of. Uh, she is kidnapped by Dick Turpin, um, so he needs to get her back in order to marry her, uh, so on and so forth. Right, what are my thoughts on the highway men? Well, very much like the other three films that I have watched and reviewed, I think I reviewed the majority of the ones I mentioned earlier on my own channel over at Screen Stars, but I'm fairly sure Leo's reviewed the others uh, on this channel as well, the ones I mentioned. Um, it's pretty poor, it's pretty dull if I'm being honest. It doesn't stand out, it's, it, again, in keeping with the others, it's, it's, it's no outstanding set pieces. It's almost like someone's decided to do like a Dick Turpin film. Uh, number one, not really focus on Dick Turpin, but it's like all the bits that they could cut out of the film that they don't want to put in this film they swooped in, picked up and edited together to make this movie because it's just mm, not great. I mean, there's there's quite a few familiar faces here. Certainly there's one or two of faces here that I recognise from the previous films I mentioned. Um, and it's like, and, I, and I've said this before when I reviewed these other films, that it, it's almost like it's a drama school that are kind of just keep making these films one after each other. So they'll wrap production on one, but because they're all in a similar time period, they kind of reuse the same costumes almost uh, and the settings and then just kind of film the next one almost. Um, and while they're not offensively bad or anything, because I don't think any of the performances are what you would describe as um, terrible or anything like that, you know, they're all of uh, a decent standard. You know, it's UK based, uh, UK based actors, um, and they all do a decent job. It's not that, it's just the film does not engage you as an audience member. It just doesn't interest you as an audience member. And they kind of portray Dick Turpin, like I say, as like this fumbling fool for the most part. Um, he constantly keeps getting caught. 
And there's this weird layer of humour going through this whole thing, which I'm not sure actually helps or hinders it. Initially, you kind of think, oh, they're going for a lighter approach here, whereas in the other ones, I don't remember them having any kind of humour in them. So it's going for a lighter tone, this one, but it felt awkward. And some of the dialogue um, was just incredible i mean there's there's one scene where he's trying to sell himself to this father who's trying to sell, marry off his daughter you know and he brags that he's got the um the biggest shaft in the whole country i he's mine and you're like did you just say that did he mean what i think he meant and it, it, it might as well have just turned to camera and winked um it, and the, there's there's other ones as well there's other bits of dialogue in there um that just there's, there's a scene, I think, where the woman is looking for Dick Turpin and she knocks on the door, someone opens it and she says, I'm looking for Dick. Uh, and again, you're just like, are they being serious here? And then when the film actually finishes, you get a few outtakes at the end of it. So there is a definite layer of humour that runs through this that I'm not sure works for the film or not. Um, and then you've got the villain, Tom Hendrick, um, who's essentially playing this real pantomime villain. But it's, it's a, like a Dick Turpin film where Dick Turpin is not the real centre of attention here or the real focus. It's, it's like this weird story surrounding it. And it's just a bit of an odd film overall, really. Um, I can't honestly recommend it because unless you like the other ones. If you like the other ones I mentioned, Jekyll and Hyde, Ripper Untold and Bram Stoker's Van Helsing, if you quite like those productions, you probably quite like this one. Uh, but be prepared. You're like it's a bit odd. It's a bit weird. The dialogue's really poor, and there's 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 not really much to grip you in a sense of uh, action um, or anything really. It's just that there's lots of conversations, which is in keeping with the other ones that have been done, um, and not really that enjoyable or engaging so i'm going to give this one a four out of ten it's very much on par with the other ones um very little to recommend but it is certainly they're certainly not it's certainly not a shockingly bad film or anything it's just not particularly good so thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed the review don't forget to call back on the geek legion of doom channel very very soon for loads more content